And I think for a long time, we have, you know, been accustomed to showing up to work in the same colored scrubs, the same design scrubs as everybody else, you know, uh, sit down in your operatory, treat your patients for eight hours, get up, leave, rinse and repeat and do the same thing over and over again. And now what we're starting to see is this evolution or this movement where particularly hygienists are able to take on interesting roles within the practice. Hello, friends. David Rice. I'm your chief editor here at Dentistry IQ. It's gloves off. It's Katrina Sanders, the one and only <laughs> wine dentist here. We are talking about alternative career roles in the dental practice. It's a big, big topic today. So yeah. educate me, my friend. Oh my gosh. I love this. I, I, I'm excited for this because I think that this is where clinicians, um, administrative team members can really step into their power in unique ways. Uh, it's yeah. what an exciting time to be in dentistry, right? Um, because we know that there are, we all have different interests. We all have different passions. And I think for a long time, we have, you know, been accustomed to showing up to work in the same colored scrubs, the same design scrubs as everybody else, you know, uh, sit down in your operatory, treat your patients for eight hours, get up, leave, rinse and repeat and do the same thing over and over again. And now what we're starting to see is this evolution or this movement where particularly hygienists are able to take on interesting roles within the practice. Um, so I want to walk through a couple of them uh, with you, if you don't mind, because I, I think yeah. that these are some, some things that as a hygienist, I want you to think about, would this be exciting? And then what I want you to do, Dr. Rice, is let me know, what are your thoughts as a practice owner on some of these pieces? So for example, um, hygienists, there are a lot of us that love geeking out on the new research. You know, we're the ones that come into the practice and we say, um, you know, hey, doctor, take a look at this new piece of research that came down from the American Heart Association about X, Y, and Z. How exciting is this? And we're the ones that love having that conversation with our patients. Did you know a new research article came out that said there's a link between blood pressure and periodontal disease? So for the hygienists that love geeking out on that content, you could approach your doctor and say, I'd like to write a, a small uh, segment or a column in the monthly newsletter that goes out to our patients. Um, or I'd like to start a monthly newsletter that goes out to our patients. Um, you know, maybe I could uh, take little pieces of that article and make them social media posts. So can I be involved in creating some of those front facing patient educational pieces? hygienists that love that kind of stuff. Those of us who love living on Canva, I'm one of those, um, you know, even talk to your doctor about, you know, I'd like to be active on social media. I'd love to be active in helping to promote the practice uh, from a marketing standpoint. I, I think I'm a good copywriter. So I'd love to write content that our patients or potential patients can metabolize within the practice. What are your thoughts on hygienists doing something like that? raving, raving fan so much so that if any of you are watching and you need help that please let me know because we work with a lot of people to help get them from where they are to where they want to be in that space. I think it's um, a massive benefit to the patients within the practice already from an educational standpoint. It's a huge opportunity to educate the community. And then, you know, the byproduct, the happy byproduct is practice growth. And yes. you, you help build the practice brand and hygienist. The cool thing for you is you're building your own personal brand. That's right. Is a part of that, is a part of that story. Love it. You know, that's, that was a really how I got my start in <clears throat> trying to put my voice out there into the community. Um, I was working with two very different practices here in Phoenix and Scottsdale. Um, one of the, and I was working for both of them at the same time. One of the practices was a very uh, high end, relatively holistic kind of a spa type practice where their ideal clientele are going to be more of that, um, uh, you know, highly educated, um, you know, uh, individuals that are work young working professionals. And so one of the things that I did when I was working for this practice was I told the doctor, I I'd like to do some educational programs to reach out into our ideal niche network. So I contacted 
the local Whole Foods. And it turns out Whole Foods will do these little monthly trainings. And so they said, absolutely, we'd love to have somebody from the dental community come in and do a little program for, you know, our audience here at Whole Foods or Sprouts, you know, so these organic grocery stores were bringing us in and we were doing these fun trainings. Um, at the same time, I was also working for a Medicare Medicaid practice uh, in the, the heart of, um, in Phoenix, where there's a, a low socioeconomic status population, um, you know, dental IQ is low uh, in those communities. And this particular practice was uh, is a train station themed dental practice. So our pediatric patient population is going to be our ideal target. Not that we were a pediatric practice, but of course you're attracting um, kids and families and, and and that sort of thing. And so at the same time. I was reaching out to the local schools there, communicating with the school nurses and saying, hey, I'd love to do a program for your second graders on oral hygiene and how to brush their teeth and how to floss. And I, I made these like pillowcases that had like felt pockets and, you know, a lot of them were, you know, pink and then there'd be one that was red and inside of it was all these little bugs that would come out, you know, and, and we just, we found a really neat way to help educate the kids and, you know, give them a little toothbrush with a card saying, you know, Hey, come on in, give this to your parents. You know, we'd, we'd love to see you in our practice. So again, another really neat way to get out into the community. That's what hygienists were really built to do, weren't we, is to be patient advocates and to educate the community. And so um, that was another way that I was able to take a non-traditional role um, as a dentist uh, as a practice owner, um, what are your thoughts on hygienists leaving the practice uh, for a chunk of time and going and doing some of these marketing pieces? I think it's wonderful. I think, you know, for obviously, so where, where I'll, I won't be David dentist. I'll be most dentists right now. Average dentist is watching going like, oh my God, if Katrina leaves the practice and she can't be here working on a patient right now. And I would, I would liken that to practices who say, I don't have time for team meetings. I don't have time for us to educate ourselves more. So we get so busy working in our practice, we forget to work on our practice and that working on our practice time, getting out into the community always pays you back a hundredfold on all aspects. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think that's another really neat way. And uh, I'll say this hygienist, when you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I would love to do this. You know, I'd, I'd love to approach my doctor and my practice owner with this. Again, think about the type of conversation that you're going to be having. You're rebranding what your position is within that practice. So that conversation is a really critical conversation. But I will say outside of non-clinical uh, modalities, there are things that you as a hygienist can do even within the practice. So, um, you know, I love the concept around oral myofunctional therapy. Um, I know several hygienists that are not uh, providing any uh, profies or perio maintenances or periodontal treatment. They have built out entire columns where that is all they are doing is oral myofunctional therapy. I've met hygienists that are so focused on patient counseling. They don't pick up a scaler. They don't pick up an ultrasonic because they're so focused on patient screening, salivary diagnostics, oral inflammation, uh, nutritional panels. So there are hygienists, uh, more biological hygienists that have built out models where that's the type of work that they're doing. I've met hygienists that are highly trained. Um, like I'm going to do a shout out to Nicole Fortune, Laura Corbin. Um, these ladies are Stephanie Little. Um, these uh, hygienists are trained in perioendoscope therapy, so advanced periodontal procedures. And so they they primarily work with a fiber optic camera down in the subgingival space, and they're doing these kind of unique advanced procedures. So even within the practice as a clinician, you can niche into very specific targeted areas within the practice, uh, which I think is just a really exciting and neat way. We see hygienists, um, it, particularly in our perio practice, we have hygienists that do um, oral hygiene boot camps um, and all of doctors post-operative appointments. So they're not picking up a scaler. Uh, they're specifically working with a clientele where they're doing more counseling procedures, more educational procedures, um, you know, getting that electric toothbrush out, showing adaptation for the patient and things like that. So I think the, the critical component to all of this is looking at 
what is your passion? What are, what drives you? What excites you within the practice? And is there a need within the practice for an amplification of those unique skills? It can even be simple things. Um, and, and I don't mean simple, simple, but it can even be things like our artsy craftsy hygienists that love to put together cute little gift baskets. Um, you know, when it comes to, to Christmas time, could you almost be like a practice liaison, uh, reaching out to your, you know, ideal uh, strategic partnerships and, and designing little gift baskets or, uh, you know, uh, little uh, ways to be able to uh, thank the new patients that come into your practice or thank the patients that have referred patients to you. So could you get involved in some of those ways? Um, could you get involved in decorating the office for every new holiday? You know, Christmas is coming up. So I'm the interior decorator <laughs> for the practice. And there's so many different ways to, to really lean into your skills um, and the things that you love to do and bring that to the practice. We had a gloves off where we talked about burnout and we talked about some of the ways to fight that. And I think part of that is, how can you take your unique passions, the things that you love and allow your career to amplify those things? Fantastic. So hygienists who are watching, oh my gosh, dental assistants who are watching, a yes. lot of this applies to you too. If you're on the business team, a lot of this applies to you as well. Think about what's possible. Think about what you love. Remember the whole framing of your story from a couple episodes yeah. ago and how you come to, you know, the dentist and dentists pay attention. There's so many opportunities out there for us to get better as a team, as a practice and to help our patients better, help our communities better. Katrina, mm -hmm. you are a delight. Thank you so much for your time. Everybody, thanks for being here today. Questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, chime in. We want to hear them. Absolutely. Thank you.